My name is Liva Lumeko and this is my profile. Um, when I started playing football, I was probably around six or seven years old. Uh, Dad used to take me to a lot of places, um, to some of Stan Foundation or... But when I really started playing at a young age, I was around eight or nine years old. Um, I went to David Beckham Academy. I went there, um, I was there for a few months, maybe a year. I went there week in, week out, scoring goals and performing quite well and um, obviously it took me to a place in Brixton in, and obviously I trained there for a few weeks and then one time we, some of the players that were there we went over to um, Cobham at um, Chelsea and um, we had a, a game at Chelsea training ground. I remember I was like eight or nine years old playing against guys maybe 12, 13 years old but I played quite well when I scored so um, they asked me to, to come back and to go and train for them at Chelsea. And what really motivates me to keep playing, first of all, I have the love for the game. Um, each day I always try to think what I can do to get better. Uh, I watch videos of players that I need to learn from, the top class players, because that's what I'm aspiring to be at. My, uh, my target is obviously win plenty of trophies, to play in the Champions League finals, to play in Europe. That will play for my country one day as well. And um, most important, I love the game, I love to play football, but the trophies is what um, motivates me quite a lot. There's a few players that I really look up to. Um, obviously, the first one I'll say is Cristiano Ronaldo in terms of his mentality and um, how he is and how he conducts himself as a player. Um, obviously we all know how he is and how dedicated he is and it's not easy to be dedicated for the duration that he has done it. He's done it for a majority of his career and another player that um, I would say I tried to link my game to is um, someone like Sterling at Man City and um, Eden Hazard, I like the way he plays, the way he dribbles plus players and and how he is in big games, you know, and big games are for big players and I like the way he conducts himself in big games. So um, those are the, the few players that I look up to and aspire to be like one day. Me signing my first professional contract, yeah, it meant a lot to me personally, but at the same time I knew that it didn't really mean nothing if I wasn't where I was meant to be, you know, and um, I knew I was cool. I think I knew I was always going to get one from the age of 16. Um, we agreed on it when I was 16, so um, I always knew I was going to get one at the end. So maybe the feeling was already done by the time I was told when I was 16. But obviously, signing it and confirming it was obviously a joyful moment. Obviously, my parents and my family signed my first professional contract. So it was always good for me to obviously um, to sign it. Making my debut in the Premier League was, how can I say it? It happened so quickly. Um, we had a game one time uh, against the first team. And um, I remember that after that session, the staff were talking about me, how um, even though we lost that training match around 9-0 or 9-1, but in terms of me going past the players and embarrassing some of the first team players, um, it was good. And obviously the following week, they, they made me start training with them on a regular basis and um, funny enough I remember hearing um, Jason Punch and Ox in the gaffer um, he's leaving travelling with us and he said yes so I kind of heard it but I kind of like tried to dismay it so obviously I got home and um, this kit man called me and said to me yeah bring your stuff and then this is your kit number and obviously I remember just getting all happy and excited and just you know thanking God for obviously it's this chance that I was going to get and um, because it happened so quickly, I didn't really expect to be coming on and be the first sub. So, you know, um, I remember being on the bench. Be, me being on the bench already was a good thing. You know, it was my first time travelling and then being on the bench. And then I remember thanking the ball. 
um, telling me to go warm up. As soon as the second half started, I, I was freaking me, like, I was a bit confused. But then, so I went over, jogged, and um, I started warming up, and I remember him calling me back saying I'm coming on. And obviously, I didn't even have time to function everything properly into my head, so I literally just went out there and just, and just played, and obviously afterwards, I realized was obviously a, a moment that I obviously always wanted to do, I'm you know, playing the Premier League. And that's, a, that's something I can't forget at the end of the day. And so um, it was a one, wonderful moment for me and my family. Um, it's a big jump in terms of intensity and obviously the quality of the players and how obviously in new football, there's, there's, there's moments where you can make mistake, mistakes. So, you know, you can probably the, it's, it's very key in terms of football, your positioning. So, you know, whether you can not track back as much or maybe you're not in a, in a position in line with the midfield for me as a winger, for an example. And in first of football, it's non-stop. It's literally non-stop. You have to be in the right place at the right time. You have to be working hard. It's literally non-stop. So in terms of the intensity for me, that is the massive difference. If you know you're good enough, you go and play and you show your ability whether it's under 23s or first in football. My experience playing abroad, I would say it's been very, it's very good, you know, so far. And uh, going to Portugal is obviously a good thing for me in terms of me getting some game time, playing first in football, because that's the aim at the end of the day. Um, being at 2021, 20, I wanted to have some games under my belt. So going abroad was good, with a different culture. In Portugal, they're quite, um, the culture over there is very calm and relaxed and respectful. So I enjoyed it there, especially me being there by myself, you know, going to a different country, different language. And lucky enough, um, I went to a country where everyone is very respectful and happy and it made me, you know, settle in quite quickly, you know. It's not easy going to another country with a language you did not speak. But as long as the people there are nice and good to you, um, it helps you settle in very quickly. And that's how it was, not only with my teammates and the staff, but with the people around the city. You know, where I'm at, it's quite a, it's quite a holiday place, so um, it's quite a, a small city. So um, when I went there, everyone, whether it's the, the people in the shops or the restaurants, they, they come and introduce themselves, say hello and ask how you are. So being abroad in terms of, you know, being by myself, um, I wasn't really too homesick. I got homesick, well, well I wouldn't say I got homesick, I just missed the food, you know. But uh, other than the food, I was good. Because I knew that I had to go there and do a job. So I didn't really worry about the football and me being by myself. It's just more of a missing eating good food. What I'd first I would say is obviously believe in yourself because um, if you don't believe in yourself personally, I feel like football is not the sport for you. Uh, but obviously in football there's a lot of attention on you and there's a lot of fans and a lot of people on social media now, so a lot of people be talking. So if you're a youngster and sometimes you're not playing, never doubt yourself, believe in yourself and, and keep going and trying to do your best every time.